Hi, I'm Lisa Tipton, director of the New York Youth Symphony Chamber Music Program. Hello, I'm Tyler Thomas, assistant director of the Chamber Music Program. Hi, I am Tomoko Fujita, chamber music program coach and cello faculty at Montclair State and Hofstra Universities. This is the third video in the series featuring the extraordinary chamber music of underrepresented composers. Each session highlights five composers, and today we will share the stories and short sound bites of selections of music by Florence Price, Amy Beach, Ethel Smythe, Joan Tower, and Libby Larson. And we are thrilled that Libby is joining us to say a few words. Hi, I'm Libby Larson, living American composer and co-founder of the American Composers Forum. It brings me such joy to join my colleagues all of us have attempted to break the glass ceiling. As the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg stated, women have come a long way, but we have a long way to go. A 2019-20 worldwide study of concerts revealed only 3.6% of all the music performed was composed by women. While the numbers are up from 1.8% in a 2014-15 study, progress continues to be slow. At this rate, it will be around 2051 when we have at least one piece composed by a woman on each concert. But we're not waiting, we're composing. Some of these women's names are now familiar, but all of us have advocated and fought for women's voices to be heard through the music we compose. Florence Price became the first black female composer to have a symphony performed by a major American orchestra when the Chicago Symphony Orchestra played the world premiere of her Symphony No. 1 in 1933. Although this premiere brought instant recognition and fame to Florence Price, success as a composer was not to be hers. She would continue to fight an uphill battle in a nation that was entrenched in segregation, Jim Crow laws, racism, and sexism. Her musical training was steeped in European tradition. However, Price's music consisted mostly of the American idiom and reveals her Southern roots. Price incorporated elements of African-American spirituals, emphasizing the rhythm and the syncopation of the spirituals rather than just using the text. Her melodies were blues-inspired and mixed with more traditional European romantic techniques. The weaving of the tradition and modernism reflected the way of life was for African-Americans in large cities at the time. Price's string quartet in A minor is a perfect example of this. Let's take a listen to the third movement. was an American composer, pianist, and the first successful American female composer of large-scale art music. Her Gaelic symphony, premiered by the Boston Symphony Orchestra in 1896, was the first symphony composed and published by an American woman. She was one of the first American composers to succeed without the benefit of European training, and one of the most respected and acclaimed American composers of her era. Beach herself worried that women's limited opportunities might constrict their ability to flourish and create. Nevertheless, she persisted. Beach achieved her breakthrough with the premiere of the Gaelic Symphony, which was nearly unanimously praised, albeit in gendered terms, with statements like it was not at all feminine and thoroughly masculine in effect. Unlike dozens of forgotten women composers, Beach has remained a presence in musical history, mainly because of her success in her lifetime and scholarly efforts to promote her work. Listen to a short bit of her piano quintet.
Dame Ethel Smythe attained prominence as one of the most accomplished female composers in a male-dominated environment and as a member of the women's suffrage movement. Raised in Victorian England, where society dictated that women should not have a profession, Smythe insisted on an education and insisted that her works be performed and published, yet she remains largely unknown to us. Smythe studied in Leipzig and was encouraged by Johannes Brahms, Antonin Dvorak, and Pyotr Tchaikovsky. She composed most of her chamber music works early in her career and gained more notice with her larger scale works, such as Das Wald, which was the only opera written by a female composer mounted by the Metropolitan Opera for over a century, and The Wreckers, considered by some to be the most important English opera composed between Henry Purcell and Benjamin Britten. Smythe took two years off from music to be a political activist and even spent time in prison for her actions. When the conductor and her friend Thomas Beecham paid her a visit, he found inmates singing her anthem, March of the Women, while she conducted with a toothbrush. In 1922, she was named a Dame of English Empire, the first female composer to be bestowed with the honor. Here's an excerpt of her piano trio. and Joan Tower both are known and sung, but have earned that by tireless advocacy for female composers. Libby Larson, one of America's most performed living composers, has written over 500 works spanning virtually every genre, from intimate vocal and chamber music to massive orchestral works, and over 15 operas. Grammy award-winning and widely recorded, she is constantly sought after for commissions and premieres, and has established a permanent place for her works in the concert repertory. As a vigorous, articulate advocate for the music and musicians of our time, in 1973, Larson co-founded the American Composers Forum, which has become an invaluable aid for composers in a transitional time for American arts. Her style and approach to music comes from her own philosophy on music. Her music comes from the sound she hears every day around her in the world. It is noted for its energy, optimism, and pervading lyricism. And in her words, if 30 years of consistently working in public on a national and international scale and speaking my professional mind out loud in public combined with raising a family can be considered feminism, then yes, I consider myself a feminist. Have a listen. Joan Tower is an American-born composer who spent much of her youth in Bolivia, Chile, and Peru, where her father worked as a geologist. She started her career as a professional pianist, as a founding member of the Nuremberg Award-winning the Capo Chamber Players, which commissioned and premiered many of her most popular works. Joan, who is on the faculty of Bard College, is now widely regarded as one of the most important American composers living today. During her career spanning more than 50 years, she has made lasting contributions to musical life in the United States as a composer, performer, conductor, and educator. Her works have been commissioned by major ensembles, soloists, and orchestras, and recent awards include Chamber Music America's 2020 National Service Award and Musical America's Composer of the Year. Joan has been a lifelong fighter and advocate for living composers, especially women, and her tremendously popular Five Fanfares for the Uncommon Woman is dedicated to the noteworthy women who are risk takers and adventurers. Let's take a listen.
For more information about these composers, check out at the bottom of the video. You'll find links to entire movements as well as other works by each of the composers. And for our next session video, we'll talk about Asian and Asian American composers of today.